Hello? Is this working? Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm David, uh, David McNamara, um, Director of Digital Strategy at IRIS. Uh, it was my second South By uh, this year, my first time that I spoke at South By. Uh, and I'm going to take you through our, our first theme, uh, which is 21st century uh, content craft. Um, it didn't need to go very far at South By to hear the word content, and we've all heard the word content probably far too often, right? Uh, how the content industries are thinking of new ways to build and satisfy audiences. And there were plenty of headlines around content shocks and content hangovers, uh, with loads of chat about marketeers increasing their love affair with content marketing. But what happened, uh, what appeared, was the notion of 21st century content craft, the means to find uh, new ways for you to experience reality that pops, blending the principles of purpose, originality, <coughs> participation, and storytelling to build imaginative story worlds where content can fuel participation. So I'm just going to take you through uh, a few highlights that, I, that kind of struck me at, um, uh, at South By. And the first one was uh, Upworthy. So essentially, Upworthy is, is another kind of BuzzFeed, a very successful website. And if news is going to find you uh, today, it's going to find you via an, an algorithm. Uh, we heard it from the CEO, Upworthy, one of the fastest growing websites of all time talk about how they're perfecting what they call algorithmic journalism, <clears throat> or what their critics call clickbait with a conscience. Uh, uh, they publish content about social issues uh, that are designed for sharing, essentially, from history to sexual politics and everything in between. This form of journalism is part human, part machine, part gaming, and part creativity. Uh, content crafted to perform within the rules designed uh, for bias, essentially. And as marketeers, we need to understand this. Um, and it works. Uh, the 100 most popular posts were viewed and shared more than 380 million times last year. They have over 50 million unique visitors a month. That's an incredible figure. Uh, and average uh, Facebook posts, um, 75,000 likes per post. Uh, so what's its secret? <clears throat> well, uh, relentless testing. Um, an intimate understanding of feed algorithms, so edge rank within Facebook in particular, editorial framing, uh, and, and very smart curation tactics. Each editor will trawl the web for what they call seeds uh, and turn these into kind of editorial nuggets. Uh, and then these nuggets are tested for what they call the cu curiosity gaps. Um, uh, curiosity gaps uh, headlines are their kind of editorial stamp. So a headline's too vague, I don't want to click, and a headline's too specific, I don't need to click. Um, and each headline is, uh, is kind of tested for arousing the, just the, the right amount of intrigue and invitation. Um, they write 25 headlines per article uh, with images and test that to a very small portion of their, uh, their audience to test for optimum traffic and what they call attention minutes rather than engagement. And rather than uh, just looking at the numbers, they use statements like bestish, uh, to help their editors guide uh, for rollout decisions. So it's a really kind of uh, great kind of insight into an editorial kind of uh, workflow of the 21st century. Um, and they've also inevitably, they've launched their kind of uh, advertising platform this week, in fact. Uh, instead of kind of display ads and uh, the kind of usual formats that you might find on websites, they've gone for a native advertising collaboration platform, which sounds quite spectacular, uh, to access their, their audience. Unilever's uh, kind of um, uh, project spotlight is their, is their kind of first client. Um, and, you know, native advertising continues to blur the lines between branded content and editorial, and I think we'll see a lot more of these kind of initiatives moving forward. Um, another example of kind of 21st century content is um, brands as services, and that was talked about a lot at South By, and it's been talked about before, and it's one of these trends that are kind of uh, building. So be useful, be interesting, interesting or be ignored. Uh, although not a new trend, it was discussed in the context of mobile content marketing, one of the kind of hardest uh, channels to crack, as we know. This is Nike's uh, SB app, which launched about four or five months ago, uh, and it's a great example of what I call kind of how-to how entertainment or branded utility, uh, mixing engagement and being useful, uh, and it, it combines skating how-tos with gaming mechanics, user-generated user content, and incredible production values. Uh, it really helps skateboarders improve their skills, get inspired, and kind of earn social reputations along the way. So it's a great example of kind of a utility proposition to trigger and kind of foster participation. 
Uh, another e example is, uh, of what I kind of call extraordinary digital storytelling uh, was another kind of big talking point. I don't know whether you guys know, but South by, South by is also a film festival, so there's a kind of lot of crossover between filmmakers and, and, and marketeers. Uh, and digital storytelling is all about mixing film and interactive design disciplines to explore new ways to tell stories, essentially. This is an, an example of uh, the winner, in fact, of South By's uh, kind of interactive filmmaking, Fort McMoney. Uh, and it's a, it's a playable documentary, uh, which, is qu which is quite uh, interesting. It's on YouTube, you can, you can go and check it out. And it's a new entertainment format that merges uh, kind of strategy gameplay and documentary techniques into a participation platform. Um, and the piece tells the story of a virtual future of Fort McMoney, which is the third largest oil field on Earth in Canada. It's a real place uh, where the viewer can explore and experience firsthand the game world of the community, talk to residents, make decisions about how the story unfolds, and decide the city's uh, fate, if you like. So this immersive storytelling really helps you understand the issues of the topic, and, and you kind of build an affinity with the character. Uh, so there's lots of lessons, I think, to be learned from interactive filmmakers on how branded content can improve uh, you know, story, storytelling capabilities to make it extraordinary. So an another huge topic at South By was news. So TV news as a, as a business model is, is, is broken, essentially. Uh, journalism 2.0 was kind of mentioned in the hallways uh, across lots of talks. Declining ratings, and an ageing audience, and unchanged news formats and is kind of ripe for, for disruption. The average age of a TV, TV uh, news viewer in the US is 55. Along comes Vice, of course, rebooting the news with a bang, uh, making serious news cool, incisive and visceral. They launched about four months ago, so they're out of beta now, bringing a very kind of en energetic, tech-savvy kind of street journalism to a new generation. Uh, using editorial techniques from drone journalism, which was very successful at Istanbul last summer when they covered the, the, the protest, to Instagram videos uh, and on the ground kind of uh, coverage. And it seems to be working. So it's kind of getting through the kind of millennial kind of bullshit kind of detect, uh, detectors, which are incredibly hard to kind of get through. Um, and they're rebooting Cookery. This was, this was launched this week, in fact, The Guardian just, uh, and it's uh, got the best name ever. It's called Munchies. Uh, so, the, 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 you know, the cookery TV market globally is, is billions of dollars and they see it as a, as a kind of ripe opportunity to disrupt food TV and I, th I think they'll do a kind of cracking job at it. Um, another example of a company rebooting the news is a company called News Deeply. Uh, Capitalising on the cutbacks in foreign news has been dramatically cut over the last kind of 10 years. They've gone for a kind of niche and deep approach to journalism. Uh, with a very much a kind of user experience-led strategy, they've built a platform that is replicable and iterative, so they can uh, build out these very deep vertical sites, port them into uh, other websites, and uh, you know, from topics from Syria through to the environment, specialist big kind of topics where uh, audiences need to get a, a, a lot of detail. So it's about designing news for the user first and building this kind of deep engagement. Um, another kind of interesting ongoing trend is uh, short-form video. I think uh, loads of different brands and different companies are having a crack at how to kind of figure it out because it is very short, either six seconds or 15 seconds. Samba Me on the left there won the best social app at South By, uh, trading on this trend. It's a kind of reactive social messaging service which allows people to send 15 seconds videos and record their friends reacting to that content, which is quite interesting. So it's a, it's a build on Snapchat, but um, interestingly, uh, the content doesn't self-destruct, uh, and it, you know, it's very much around personal communications. The example on the right is kind of a little bit nerdy, uh, my, my nerdy example, so, so apologies about that, but it's a, it's a guy on Instagram that's trying to uh, educate people about history through 15-second uh, shorts uh, on, on, a, on a variety of topics. So there's, there's quite a bit of experimentation going on uh, within short-form vid video. Um, but of course, the biggest news at South By, it's f finally arrived. Uh, welcome to the cyberpunk era. Uh, virtual reality internet uh, imagined in the 1990s has definitely arrived. So uh, Snow Crash's uh, book in the 1990s, which some of you might, uh, might remember, talking about the metaverse and the internet as reality, essentially. Of course, Facebook bought Oculus Rift for a cool $2 billion. 
no one knows why, and everyone's still trying to figure that out, uh, and it caught everyone by surprise. Um, according to Facebook, um, it allows developers to really get inside uh, and create new worlds for, for people to explore. By feeling truly present, you can share unbounded spaces and experiences with people in your life. Um, so, and, and if you listen to the way Zuckerberg talks about it, it's an opportunity around communication rather than just gaming. And there's all kinds of uh, possibilities. And it's not just Facebook. Sony launched their um, virtual reality headset for the PS4 two weeks ago. So this whole space is, uh, is hotting up incredibly. And, and I think this story will be the biggest story of 2014 post South by. Uh, and the next generation internet is a very real science fiction that within the next decade will be a familiar feature in, in all our kind of homes and, and, and houses. And it will have a profound effect on everything from business to culture through to communication. And brands are exper experimenting already with Oculus Rift O2. Uh, did the Wear the Rose uh, activation recently. It's about to kick off, I think, in the next month. So it's a rugby training experience that combines footage from a GoPro camera uh, with the Oculus Rift so that fans can experience training with England, essentially. Um, and Selfridges on the right there did a kind of chamber experience for their menswear department, where you can journey through the inspiration of their latest collection, something I'd, I wouldn't do. But, uh, uh, and there's little doubt that the next generation virtual reality will provide incredible possibilities for brands. I don't think we, we, we can all imagine it just, just yet. But the trick will be to kind of balance the, the kind of narrative of the brand uh, with the ability to kind of roam free in, in, in these spaces that can be created. So who knows what Zuckerberg has planned, but whatever it is, there's, there's lots of money available to do something worthwhile, hopefully. So, key takeouts, as Ben was saying about action. Uh, you know, think about crafting for the curiosity gap and thinking about that, you know, the kind of techniques of algorithmic, algorithmic journalism. Uh, make sure your content pops, so thinking about purpose, originality, uh, participation and storytelling. It's good enough to earn attention. Squashed is a great example of that. Uh, and follow the kind of craft skills of people reinventing the news uh, and foster a kind of culture of uh, content craft within your organization. But the biggest one, obviously, is kind of reimagining re the kind of immersive brand experiences that are possible through technology like the Oculus Rift and start designing content you, you can experience rather than just read. So.